yeah, I'm, I, I can be a little bit rough around the edges. Uh, I've got my sleeves rolled up and everything right now, and I don't wear a tie. I'm not part of the Blue Super Brigade. G'day, guys. Uh, today I am joined by none other than Brett Andreessen from Doug Disher Real Estate, uh, 2015 REIQ Salesperson of the Year. Correct. So, Brett, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Carl. So, we're going to have a bit of a cruise around to Wong today. I'm currently covering someone's drive and about to get <laughs> smashed into, but we'll be all right. We'll be fine. We'll, we'll be, be fine. fine. The locals are good here. <laughs> but they know Brett, so that's, that's <laughs> keeping me safe. Keeping me yeah, safe. that's it. That's it. <laughs> So mate, I, uh, I understand you, you got into real estate back in 2005 as Doug's PA? Correct, correct, yeah, kicked off as Doug's uh, personal assistant, uh, went for the interview when I was 19 and they rejected me several times um, and I kept on going back so eventually they created a bit of a position for me to uh, be a PA because I wanted to go straight into sales, uh, okay. I actually used to work just around the corner where we are now at the regatta. Right, okay, yeah. so the tenacity kind of won, won, won you the job. Yeah, yeah, I just kept on going for it and uh, everyone thought, everyone said I was too young and everyone else in the area was sitting around about the age of 30 plus and here I was at 19, uh, wanted to give it a go. And so what, what was the attraction? What, what sort of attracted you to, to real estate? Jeez, um, uh, first I, when I graduated school, got straight into the, to the bars, so I was working at a casino um, for 12, 18 months and then went to the regatta and I was basically working on tips only. So. Pay was, pay was good, but I was more used to upselling and then pulling in tips from customers. And one afternoon, I'm at the regatta working, chatting with one of the guys who was there, and he asked me what I wanted to do with my life. One of those sliding doors deep questions moments. you get uh, <laughs> for a guy who's probably four schooners deep um, on a Tuesday <laughs> at two o'clock. Um, and I said, mate, I haven't really thought about it. He goes, well, you seem to be pretty good at selling, so you've probably got two options in your life. Uh, you can go and jump on the cruise ships and I'd been offered a few positions going on the cruise ships around the world um, uh, dealing cards and uh, serving drinks or I could um, and he said why don't you go and sell something a bit bigger on a real estate and I'd never moved house at that time so I, so I sort of looked into it and I did the uh, the Ray White Cadetship program uh, where I went ahead office did all, did all that and uh, uh, they didn't they didn't place me um, for anything and I sort of uh, Knew the area that I wanted to be in, which is which is Tawang, because I went to school at Indrapilly and uh, found a co found a company which I sort of thought, yeah, that'll fit that'll fit me, sort of more of a boutique style um, agency, and uh, yeah, the rest they say is uh, history now. Fast forward ten years, and, and you uh, won REOQ Salesperson of the Year. <laughs> yep. Talk us through talk us through that process. Uh, so I started entering it um, after we had the big floods in 2011. Um, that was that was. Probably a, that was a pretty tough time, obviously for the marketplace. We had a, a lot of uh, drop in, we had big drop in prices, big drop in stock levels, uh, which happened during that time. And uh, through that, I was out helping a ton of people in the area. And like one of my clients, uh, who I'd sort of uh, helped project manage the rebuilding of their house um, over in Auckland Flower, had said, "Brett, like, is there some sort of awards you can go into to to do it?" And being a boutique agency, it's not really the uh, the big franchise Group awards stuff. that they get um, so I thought all right I'll, I'll enter into the REIQ awards and uh, put in the put in submission and use it basically as like a year review sort of just unload unearth um, all my uh, my feelings of what went on during that year and got into the finals and shocked the hell out of myself and then when you when you sort of get in the finals for the first time everyone builds you up saying you're gonna win this you're gonna win it <laughs> and then uh, lost it <laughs> um, and it was pretty, it was pretty devastating. devastating yeah, yeah, pretty devastating after that to uh, to lose it. And I thought, all right, I'll give it another go uh, the next year, and lost that one. So I thought, oh, third time's a charm. <laughs> lost that one, <laughs> and then went in for the fourth time, and uh, yeah, no, came came back with the win on that one. And a lot of it was just uh, refining the process of what we've been doing. It's also good just sort of see how you sort of stack up, yeah. um, not just from number of sales and things like that, because that doesn't really come into too much into it. Yep. Um, it's more like significant sales, what you do for the community, what you do for um, for your clients, uh, customers, you, what you do for the office as well. Uh, so you see a lot more a lot more um, emphasis on that as opposed to the purely gross commission or average sale price awards that you sort of see. Like I, I've seen the winners who have gone through um, each year and uh, the big thing that I see a lot of them is contribution to the industry, furthering the profession of real estate. Uh, which I which I think is probably the, the biggest uh, 
if you do win the award, um, you get you get you get the placards and that. You've got to give back to the to the industry and to the profession to say, hey, I may have won this, but I want to try and bring new people through the industry, encourage uh, the increased professionalism of them. That, that's that's what I've said. Like when I won it, I was like, right, it's now it's time to give back. Uh, and I think you did that a lot, didn't you? Because I know you did a lot of, um, you, you know, you're always involved in in the training events that REIQ puts on yeah. and the you know the new agent nights and things like that to kind of tell them what to expect yeah and and like peter brewer and i uh were doing those nights as a, as a uh basically raw it wasn't just this is how you do to get an industry we, we went into a bit more of like this is the real real estate um it's it's not the flash of the of the uh the jags and the volvos um it, it is saying <laughs> <laughs> there you go mark there's a shout out <laughs> but it's more uh it's more saying hey these are the hours that you're expecting you're not going to be earning 200 grand 500 grand in your first year the reality is you'll be on minimum wage if you're lucky at the start um and it's an apprenticeship it's an apprenticeship and we, we took that raw and real approach and we had a lot of great feedback from people who thought actually you know what maybe this isn't for me mm. which sometimes it isn't. I mean, I've spoken about it a couple of times now with agents about, you know, the million dollar agent, um, you know, tagline and, yeah. and the expectation that, you know, a seven figure income is, you know, realistic for most people when I think yeah. the reality is a little bit, you know, there, there's a bit of smoke and mirrors. I don't, like that. I, I don't know if there's any agents who are there writing a million dollars by themselves, realistically. Yeah. It becomes, it's a team approach. And... The industry itself, and this, I'll, I'll get on my high horse right now. Uh, put so much emphasis Find on, box, yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, get, put put so much emphasis on the on the million dollar agent tag that everyone's sort of trying to aim for it. When you know what minimum minimum wage in Australia is what thirty two thirty six thousand dollars a year. Average income's fifty two to fifty six thousand dollars a year. Sydney's probably like ninety because they have to. Um, but it's it's ridiculous that someone gets there and could be earning one fifty a year and is made to feel. It. Mm. And they're told they're told that they're actually failing. When you go, no, you're actually doing really well for an individual. And if that's the if you've got a great work life balance where you 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 get there, you work normal human hours, you've got great relationships with your clients, um, you're bringing in six figures, which is a phenomenal income. We're not doing anything special here. We're helping people move. Um, and if you can write five hundred without anyone, and someone's writing a million with three people, who's doing better? Yes. Like yeah. that, that's, we're not comparing uh, apples with apples here. Mm. And I think that, so in, in terms of your, your business, mm -hmm. you work purely by yourself, right? Yep. yep. So what was the decision behind that? Because I mean, there must have been a point where you could go, I'm kind of at a crossroads now where I could bring on a PA or two and expand out, or I can kind of go, just continue doing what I'm doing, working the hours that I'm working. Um, and going that way. One's a lifestyle choice. I went through a massive burnout period, um, probably when I was what, 25, I think I was 25, around there. Um, burnt out, was sort of basically out of the industry. It was, uh, it was one of those, another one of those crossroad moments and I, I sort of was trying to be something for what everyone else wanted me to be rather than try and um, play to my own game. Yep. And I sort of, I took, I took a bit of time out and said, right, what do I want to do with this? Do I really want to go with the PA structure or the EBU structure that everyone's telling you that you have to go down? Or you know what, can I replace people with processes and just make it a very, make a streamlined business. I have consistent business coming in um, where my prospecting uh, generation system is the one that brings in the leads rather than having to hire a person to do that work. And from there, like it, it cracked the next year. Um, where it all, it, all, it all came together. And so you talk there about obviously making your business very process driven. What are some of the things that you put in place that perhaps some other agents don't do or haven't done or, or that you found that have been really beneficial for you? Yeah, one is um, making sure that you've got your prospecting calendar booked a year, even 18 months in advance so you know what's going to be happening. And I, see, I see many people who are get there and they go, I'm going to do a letter right now. And doing a letter is an absolute nightmare. If you're going to do a letter out to a thousand people, good luck. Yeah. Um, you, want to, you want to have that planned budget, what the letter is going to be, who, who's your target market. Um, other one is also understanding what your your processes are in there, what's happening in the area. So like oh, I work in Tawong, Taringa, St. Lucia, Auckland, Flower and Indrapilly, sort of three postcode area. 
Um, but certain areas turn on at certain times of the year and other areas go quiet. So why am I putting in marketing energy to an area which isn't happening right now? So for example, St. Lucia has just gone through its busy time, November through to February, uh, whereas you find typically around the orchid flower time, orchid flowers not the best time at that time of year. So okay. let's put my energy into St. Lucia um, and maybe a couple of months or three months out from that starting, so let's start warming up the area again. So I'm in there with listings, ready to go when that market really heats up and people start looking for an agent. So you, you're literally seeing differences in, in suburbs that are right next door to each other and yep. you're marketing effectively to those, those, those trends. Yeah, you can see the trends. All you have to do is just bring up a suburb and look at the last five years of um, pattern and you start seeing the trends happening in an area. Um, another one is that we've all got uh, gateway suburbs, suburbs where people may move from your area into a different area. So in my area, we get a lot of people who, they have a property in Tawong, they, they, um, they're about to have kids, so they start looking to move to a different area. They typically will move to somewhere like Kenmore or Chapel Hill where there's larger homes um, because the house prices in, in Auckland Flower and Tawong are quite a bit higher. So mm. they'll, they'll look for that gateway suburb. And I find that if people start to um, click through on my reports saying where they're downloading that information, they're starting to escalate into that, that period. So I start looking at those trends um, so I can be in front of them before they actually start looking at agents because everyone starts researching realistically eight months out from when they're actually anticipating on moving. Sure. And they always look at their destination first rather than what's happening in there because everyone thinks their place is going to sell really quickly. But sure. it's where they're moving to is the biggest uh, driving factor for them. Okay, so keep an eye out for, for that, yeah. that trend. Okay. And in terms of the prospecting that you do, on say a daily or a weekly basis, do you have a, a routine that you sort of have as like a non-negotiable? Yeah, so uh, my, my big one is um, I'm in the office in the mornings, I'm out of the office in the afternoons. Uh, I work on, I've got several different um, prospecting patterns which go, uh, like I've got my quarterly report which has now been going for nearly 10 years now, uh, which is now up to uh, it's about 3,500 people that receive the quarterly report that own a dwelling in, a, in my service area. Uh, they've consented to receive it via either post or email. Uh, we've just switched it over so people can also get an SMS with it as well with a live link. Like they're, they're common, like Brett, you're the only one who's been keeping up to date. You find that uh, people start a, start a project or start a, um, a prospecting campaign and have no intention of seeing it through. If they don't get results in the first <laughs> Week. 48 hours, yeah. <laughs> uh, that campaign was a failure. Let's move on to the next silver bullet. Yep. Um, and, and that was a failure, whereas sometimes you need a follow-up like you've got to be working in campaign the entire time, whether it's sort of warming up the data before actually picking up the phone and making the call or even just making the call. Most agents, unfortunately, don't do that anymore. Like everyone seems to be hesitant to um, pick up the phone and speak to someone, but we're all relying on social media and, uh, and all these other avenues instead of doing what we're meant to do, which is one-to-one -one prospecting. I still remember missing out a listing because the lady said, I want someone with more life experience. And I've gone... <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but this is a, and this is the the buyer of the property was my demographic, and I had to learn how to put that across to people saying, "You may be wanting someone similar to yourself to sell the property, but I work with the buyers, yes, and I can relate with the buyers, and I can use words and concepts and and trends better than what the other agent can do." And that's where I started seeing some cut through to um, to beat some of the. Uh, the seniors in the industry, shall we say? No yeah. offense. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your, your quarterly market reports. You, you obviously make your phone calls yep. and things like that. Are you at a point now where, because you've worked the area for so long, your database is, is kind of, you know, very very well nurtured, and, and you've got most of the people in your area in there? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a mature, it's a mature database. I found that after people have been receiving the reports for twenty four months, I was starting to get called in. Oh, really, it was eighteen months. I was starting to get called in unopposed, where people, they wouldn't call in any other agents. They would contact me and just say, Brett, it's going on the market. You're the only agent that we're going to deal with, so can you come and get it on the market? And that was, uh, that was a breakthrough at that time uh, because I, I could just get there and uh, yeah, you're about to get on the motorway. I so probably shouldn't go on the motorway, hey. <laughs> yeah, check it, you turn. This, this, this is where sort of, you know, doing the carpool is really quite interesting. <laughs> well, you don't know the area. <laughs> when you go, end up going down bus zones and, you know, things like that. Yeah, it's always interesting way. for the guy who actually knows where they are. <laughs> yeah, I keep wondering where you go. I got this, but I'll let you go. Um, can't remember where we were. Oh, yeah, so the area. 
Yeah, you, you see that, you get the mature data, people contact you directly, you get unopposed listings, but everyone seems to want to get the, co the random call in off the yellow pages for some reason, instead of putting the work in to actually get that database. Yeah, um, I've, I've, you know, with our, with our telemarketing division, you know, we get a lot of people phone up and just say, oh, you know, I'm not interested in speaking to anyone that wants to sell in, you know, six or 12 months. I want people that want to sell today. What a waste of time. And I said, well, <laughs> if you get called it, like if we happen to just be in the right place at the right time and make the phone call, you might get in the door, but you're going to be one of three or four, yeah. and the decision is probably already made. You're in a, you're in a shootout, yeah. and you've got to be you've got to be an absolute legend. I remember Mark McLeod saying you've got to be a Darren Lockyer to get those listings. Like there's, there's no um, there's no there's no trust, there's no um, relationship that's been built on there. You're purely going on realistically fee. Um, price you give them and how pretty you look mm. um, and if and if you just just match them and that's just pot luck and I've got a true belief that like, I know myself if I don't know the client I've got a 33% 33% chance of listing that property 33% yeah. if I have not met them before if I've no rapport if I've known them for less than 18 months I've got basically a 66% chance on it if I've known them for three years or more and I'm the only person called in realistically I should list 100% of those shouldn't I yeah. so which which person do I want to work with? Who's going to give us the better fee? Who's going to get listen to us on our marketing recommendations, our pricing recommendations? Who's more likely to get it sold? But I'd much rather give them information about a high rise that's going to go up in Tawong, which will dramatically affect the landscape of the area, will change prices um, due to increase of shops, cafes, um, there's going to be an issue on transport. People want to know that things. And if I can be that conduit of information, and put it together, they don't need to, essentially people can be quite lazy when it comes to information. They don't want to search it themselves. Mm. So if you can be that point of reference where you can say that what's going on at the, lo at the local pub or what's going on at the local bowls club and be that um, person in the community, being that facilitator, people will want to hear from you because you add value rather than just being the typical real estate agent. If you want to sell your house, no, all right, I'll talk to you later. People will tell you if they're going to sell their house. Hundred percent, they'll lead the conversation in that direction. Like I've got a, my January is purely me on the phones for an entire month, uh, calling through to each of my each of my contacts. One, confirming they're still happy to keep receiving the report. Two, making sure that the details are still correct. And three, they're going to lead this conversation if they're thinking about selling. They'll ask that they'll say, Brett, what's what's going on out there in the marketplace? Hmm. It's an interesting question. Why do you ask? Well, we're not doing anything now, but probably mid this year or this the new financial year or end of the year or whatever it is, we're going to be doing something. Chatting with a client um, who we've got on the market now and he said, Brett, how long has it been on the market for? I've gone two weeks. And he goes, we've been chatting for like six months about this, haven't we? I'm like, yeah, it's been, it's been six months that we've been getting the property ready, waiting for the tenants to move out so we can present the property correctly. Um, and he, he said, that's why, we're, that's why we're working together because you've put that effort in then. Um, I had a couple of weeks ago and they called me up and said, Brett, we're so sorry. We've got a cousin of mine's just got into real estate and we've chosen to go with them and give them a go. I'm like, best of luck, what's his details? I, 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 if I can help out at any time there, um, give him any tips or anything, I'm more than happy to be there for him. Yep. And uh, they're very appreciative and they called me up uh, when they got an offer and said, Brett, what should I do? I'm like, well, you should talk to your agent about that one, but uh, <laughs> don't, 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 for free. Don't, 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 ta don't take it, I'll, I'll get you more. No, <laughs> it was a good offer. And I said, that's a really good offer. I think you should take it. Yep. And to me, I'm, not, I'm getting nothing out of that. Mm. I'm not going to get a referral fee or anything out of that because I didn't get it. But they're going to speak to their friends um, and things like that and say, you know what? And the guy they gave it to doesn't work in the area. So if they're going to speak to anyone, they're going to go, you know what? Give Brett a call. I always find it interesting with agents that have been in, in the business for a long time and are successful. They still have mentors and they still do training and they still go to events and things like that. Um, I know you're, you're you, um, big fan of Lee Woodward, yep. Yep. Um, you know, and follow his processes. What made you choose Lee? Uh, so when I was just sort of starting out, uh, the office uh, didn't really run a database. It was the old school version of it, and I, I needed something which could uh, that I could utilize. So I looked around and looked at all the different um, different CRMs first, and that's actually how I came across. And I found Complete Data first, and uh, still remember June Newman. Um, gave, I was speaking with her and said, "How much is it?" And she tells me it's like seven hundred bucks at the time or something like that. And I didn't have that cash, and she said, "Do you have a credit card?" I'm, I don't have a credit card. It's brought up, you pay cash for things. She goes, go get a credit card. I'm like, why? And she goes, Brett, if you're not going to back yourself, who will? One of those anvil moments. And I've gone, all right, I'll, I'll do it. So I went out, got the credit card, got a laptop. So 
credit card was maxed pretty quickly. <laughs> um, and then uh, I sort of got into the system side of things and I looked at the back engine of it and I thought, all right, maybe we should do some training on it. So I was listening to the Hot Topics audios, which were found in the back of the office with dust on them and I listened to those <laughs> and I was, I was sort of hooked because I've gone, this is the, the process. And I remember listening to uh, Chris Hanley um, who was speaking on one of the audios and uh, it was Chris Hanley and um, Liz. Um, two audios that just, that just really resonated with me where I was like, here's, here's, a, here's a principal here who's, who's believing in community, who's really working a database well. I love that idea. And then Liz, who I think at the time was 21, 22, um, who had said, who was talking about her process of how she gets people onto the reports, uh, how she keeps building her database and things like that and what the results were. And I've gone, right, if I can just follow that model, then I listen to the Matt Steinway system that Lee put out and I've gone, right, that's, that's it. That's the formula yeah. to, to do that. If I can just follow that and if I can push through for two years on doing this, I think I'll crack it. And yep, 18 months later, it, it, it started really coming through and I shot through um, a lot of the, uh, the top agents in the area and um, it, it's all sort of changing from there. Yeah, so when awesome. the, world, the world became uh, a much uh, less cloudy place. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some tips that you would give to new agents that are, uh, obviously you've talked about this at, at length, so what are some, so, some sort of bits of advice that you give to agents when they're just first starting out? Yeah, um, one, Make sure everyone who you know knows you're in real estate because they're going to be one of your best advocates and everyone wants their friend to do well. So don't be afraid to just let people know if real estate's not a, a dark profession anymore like it used to be. Um, everyone wants to know someone who's in real estate, so make sure you tell you tell everyone you know about it. Two, find the people, go to the go to the principal and find out if anyone's just left the company, and find their database. That okay. was that was that's probably some of the best data you can get as someone who's just left. Because if they've left, they probably weren't working it that well. And you can reactivate that data really well. And they may have been working there for maybe two, three, four years. You've just got four years head start straight away by getting a, a mature database mm. that, you can, that you can take over. Uh, that was one thing that when I, when I sort of started, I, so if someone left, I'd, I'd sort of be going into to my principal and saying, hey, <laughs> I, just, I just saw they've cleared their desk out. Any chance that I could look after their database? Yeah, sure. And I was on the phone straight away, so just letting letting the people know, hey, I'm looking after their file right now. Um, I'd like to keep you up to date with the recent sales in Tuong. Would you like to have a post or email? And people were very receptive to it, even though they could get this information themselves. They yep. want to. They want someone to just give it to them. Sure. Yep. Um, probably my third tip is don't try and conquer the world in one go. A suburbs a big place. Tuong's four and a half, five thousand properties. Um, do one street at a time. The last street in the in the, in the book. Mm, I think a lot more now as well with, um, you know, w especially with some of the newer suburbs as well. Is they they have specific pockets, right? Like mm. you know, I know where I'm in in North Lakes. Like each pocket has actually got its own name, like yep. it's its own kind of division. So um, I know up on the Sunshine Coast as well. When I lived in Noosa, there was a couple that sort of worked in Noosa Heads, mm -hmm. and they looked after a pocket called Kalula Code. Yep. Which um, you know, Sam and Karen, they they you know really good agents. And you know it probably only comprises of maybe 500 properties, yes. um, but they write massive numbers off that because they are just known so well by those 500 residents. Mm. You basically wouldn't list with anyone else. 100 percent. I remember uh, I was listening to an interview with um, Hazley Hazley Cush, and he said, "Look at turnover. Look at opportunity in area. Like if you've got an area which does not turn over, and it, it's a hot because everyone wants to sell expensive." Everyone wants to go into the million, million, five, two million range, yeah. but if that market does not turn over, it doesn't come on the market, and you've got an area which has got four, five, six hundred thousand dollar properties, and they turn over five times as fast, I know which way I'm going to go. I'm going to go find that area where I can get five times as many clients. It might, it might not be as pretty as what everyone else uh, wants to be. And probably my last point is, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly, is that there should be more agent referrals going on all around the country. Right. It, it is it is crazy that we meet all these people and they say they're moving from Sydney or Melbourne or whatever and we don't say find out where and then send a referral down to a great agent. They just go, oh, there. good for you. Yeah, they yeah. say, good for you, just <laughs> let it go. Um, like I've got, I've got many mates across the country who I speak to and I've sent referrals off left, right and centre to them just saying, and I, I, 
for some, yep, hey, 20%, no problem. Other ones, grab me, shout me a beer when I'm next over there. Yeah. Like, you sort of have that relationship, and I think there should be a lot more of those going along because it's crazy that we keep putting out uh, referrals to uh, third, third gen, um, lead generation companies and things like that. We all get caught up in our little circle of what hap- what's happening in your area and what the next competitor is doing and why they're ripping off your marketing. Um, rather than looking at it at a, at a macro level of an Australia-wide level and saying, well, how can I make my marketing better? And what are they doing down on the northern beaches in Sydney, which makes it look fan- that makes their properties look fantastic? Sure. Can I bring that up here? Can I bring what they do over in, in Northern Territory or Tassie? Like I, I see what uh, agents down in Tassie like Nat Downton um, is doing down there with a the Facebook marketing. I go, it's phenomenal. Yep. Why, can't, why are we doing this here? How can we roll that out? Yeah, sure, sure. So, so you're paying attention to what what's going on out there, in, not just in your own oh, in your own backyard. Yeah, the world's a lot bigger place than what's going on in Toowong. Uh, loyalty is a big thing in this in this industry to me. It really is. I see everyone, so many people chop and change agencies, and yeah, sometimes it's not the right fit. But I found the right fit for me, and uh, I, you get many principals who contact and say, "Oh, do you want to catch up for a coffee?" Which is Kofa. We want to recruit you, <laughs> um, and I'm always happy for a coffee, guys, or or a beer at the regatta. So. Don't stop doing that. Um, but you know what? The grass is green where you water it. So very, well very fo- true. focus on your own game. Don't worry what other people are doing. Don't worry about what other people in your office are doing. Um, like play your own game. Be, make your own name for yourself in it. And, uh, and you'll do well regardless of where you are. Well, mate, very, very good to catch up. Thank you for taking the time and, oh, and sharing your story. My pleasure. I'm dizzy driving around to Wong. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, just, just count yourself lucky we're still in to Wong. Yeah. It could have been a lot worse. <laughs> okay, mate. Thanks again. Mate, thank All you best. very much.